Friday Night Lights is back, but you won't be seeing fans at most of tonight's games. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. And I'm Carrie Lane in for Barbara Lee Edwards. As local football teams gear up to play their first games in over a year tonight, parents at Scripps Ranch High School are fighting for a chance to be able to watch those games in person. News 8's Shannon Handy has more on the current rules in place and why some San Diego Unified District, some say this San Diego Unified District rather, is going overboard. Carrie and Carlos Scripps Ranch will play Mira Mesa, their rival, tonight at 7 o'clock on this field. So while players are being allowed back, fans are not. Instead, they'll have to watch from way up here off property. It's fantastic that they're finally getting an opportunity to play. An opportunity Brian Stoney's son, a varsity linebacker for Scripps Ranch, can't wait for. Stoney is excited as well, yet disappointed after learning the San Diego Unified School District won't allow fans, including family, inside the stadium. I don't know what it is they're afraid of, why they won't let us do this. Diane Merrigan feels the same way. Her son is also a linebacker on the team. We walk through the grocery store. We go to retail outlets. We sit outside at restaurants amongst strangers. So why wouldn't the district allow parents of children who are on the field to sit six feet apart from each other? Both Stony Americans say they expected to be able to watch their kids play in person based on guidelines put out by the California Department of Public Health. In part, they read limited observation of youth sports is allowed to immediate household members and for the strict purpose of age appropriate supervision. This includes observation of practice and competition. During this week's San Diego Unified Board meeting, Superintendent Cindy Martin suggested the board review those guidelines and work to update its own by next week. So that our families can take part in this important part of high school life. Stony and Merrigan aren't holding their breath, saying at that same meeting, parents hardly got a chance to speak on the matter. They told us they would give us each three minutes to speak. When the time finally came, after five hours, they gave us each one minute. It was just thank you very much, next. In the meantime, they will continue to advocate for themselves and other families. Another parent submitted this blueprint showing how they could attend games by sitting in pods, all while staying six feet apart. We figured out how to sit at a picnic table underneath a, a tent in a parking lot and eat at a restaurant. So I think we can sit on a cement bench in an open air football stadium and be safe. I want to see my child play and I will keep pushing and do whatever it takes. Now there is an option to watch tonight's game via a live feed. And keep in mind, this is a district by district decision. So in Sweetwater, for example, no fans are being allowed, but next door over at Poway Unified, they are. County is expected to fall into the state's less restrictive red tier on Tuesday, with that change taking effect on Wednesday. Today, the state reached its goal of administering 2 million COVID-19 vaccines to low-income, hard-hit communities. Because of that, counties can now have a case rate of 10 per 100,000 people in order to move out of the purple tier. The red tier will allow for indoor dining at 25% capacity, gyms at 10% capacity, and movie theaters at 25%. Today we got a look inside one of San Diego Unified School District's campuses as the district gets ready to bring students back to classrooms one month from today. The district gave a tour of Hoover High School in City Heights this morning. There are a number of new safety uh, features and protocols including upgraded ventilation and airflow meters in classrooms. We have a generation of San Diegans who when we have asked over and over again, are you willing to make financial sacrifice for the sake of our young people. They've said yes again and again and again. Masks will be required at all times and everyone will be tested for COVID every two weeks. Students are scheduled to return to class on April 12th. Starting tomorrow, breweries, wineries and distilleries will be able to open for business without having to serve food. Under the new rules, customers must make reservations. Patrons can only stay for 90 minutes at a time and closing time is eight. As far as bars go, those that do not serve meals will have to stay closed and will only be allowed to reopen outside after we make it into the orange tier.
Well, we're not done with that wet weather just yet. I'm Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis taking a look at our current radar sweep. We are seeing a few isolated showers out there, and that's near Santee, as well as more rain that's moving in for Fallbrook. We're not done just yet. We do have a batch of moisture just towards the north of us and even picking up on some stronger cells across Riverside County. Now, this moisture is moving from the north towards the south, so that's why we're still holding on for chances. It's wraparound moisture with that area of low pressure that is still over us. Finally made its way over us earlier today and it's going to exit towards the east as we hit the weekend forecast but still with that wraparound moisture keeping a chance for scattered showers in the forecast also the potential is still there for some strong thunderstorms as we go into the overnight hours we're holding on to those chances in addition to mountain snow so a winter storm warning is still in play for our mountains on top of the foot or more we have already received could see an additional two to four inches and that's going to expire at 10 p.m for tonight we'll take a look at your your complete forecast because we have another chance for showers coming up on the eight day. Carlo. Thank you. I've seen a few Carlene. Thank you. A former Navy man convicted of murdering his wife in 2014 will be spending 16 years to life behind bars in state prison. 36 year old Matthew Scott Sullivan was sentenced today after being convicted on second degree murder charges last year. His estranged wife Elizabeth vanished in October of 2014. Authorities believe he stabbed her to death, then hid her body in a freezer for nearly two years before dumping it in San Diego Bay the day he was set to move to Delaware. Tonight, Chula Vista police are searching for the person who shot and killed a 17-year-old boy overnight in East Lake. It happened just around 7.30 last night at Sunset View Park. Officers found the victim in the parking lot with multiple gunshot wounds. He later died at the hospital. Witnesses told police he was with friends at the park and got into an argument with another group when the shooting happened. Four people, including the gunman, sped away in a dark four-door Acura or Honda. They're all believed to be around 17 to 20 years old. Please call police if you have any information. The family of Dia Abrams, who went missing nine months ago from her ranch near Idlewild, is asking a judge to remove the current trustees of her estate. As News aide David Gonferson reports, the court petition targets the man claiming to be Abrams' fiance, as well as another woman who both have been managing the properties. I feel saddened that the children are actually going to that extent. The son and daughter of Dia Abrams, a former La Jolla millionaire who mysteriously went missing in June from her ranch near Idlewild, are now taking action in court. The petition filed this week seeks removal of the two current trustees of the estate, Keith Harper and Diana Fetter. But Fetter tells News 8 the missing woman didn't want her adult children involved in her properties. She made me promise, as well as several other people, that the children would not be allowed in the home because the first thing that would happen if she was gone, that they would come in and take everything. The man currently running the ranch, Keith Harper, claims to be Abrams' fiancé, and he co-manages the ranch with Fetter. Harper was the last person to see Abrams on the day she went missing, and he has filed power of attorney over the estate. Harper is power of attorney. I am not. I do not get to make decisions. I am the secondary if he is removed. The petition filed by Clinton and Chrisara Abrams alleges, quote, the Riverside Sheriff's Department is investigating Mr. Harper as a potential perpetrator of the crime or crimes that led to Abrams' disappearance, and that Ms. Fetter and Mr. Harper have been romantically involved since the beginning of their relationship. That is a completely false allegation. I only met him twice, and I had not spoken to him again until I was told of her disappearance. And... I would definitely not be involved with Harper in that one. He is at least 25 years my senior, <laughs> and we cannot even be considered friends. The petition also says mortgage payments are in default on the 117-acre Bonita Vista Ranch where Abrams lived, and the Abrams family alleges Harper has not provided any accounting of the assets. Quote, Abrams had nearly $200,000 and some jewelry in a safe deposit box. She also owned many valuable guns. Any authority Mr. Harper has to access these and other assets should be suspended immediately. And what's your opinion of Harper and what do you believe about his possible involvement in Dia's disappearance? I don't 
No, Harper. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not ruling anything out. I do not rule Harper out. I do not rule her children out. Keith Harper did not respond to messages seeking comment for this report. In the petition, the Abrams children are asking a judge to appoint an independent professional fiduciary to oversee the estate. Carla? This is another layer to this whole mystery and disappearance. What about the police investigation into Abrams' disappearance? Do we have any update right now on the search for her? Uh, no, no updates. We reached out to Riverside uh, Sheriff's Department and asked what's going on with their missing persons case, and they did not respond to our messages. The court hearing on this probate petition filed by the Abrams kids is now set for May 13th in court in Palm Springs. All right, David Gofferton reporting live. Thanks, David.